Simply Scuba presents the Deco Stop Podcast. Hi everybody, welcome to Simply Scuba and welcome to the Deco Stop Podcast. Um, jumping straight into website updates. Um, so only a few things have changed on uh, on Simply Scuba. The first one is that we've got a new range of fourth element rash vests. Uh, I'm going to be talking about them a little bit later because they're my product of the week. Um, so other things are the Aqualung i300C dive computer is back in stock. Um, and that is on a special offer at the moment. So it's £70 off or, or I think it's a little bit over £70 off because it's only 165 pounds and 95 pennies um, for a really nice dive computer. The uh, the i300C is very very popular, um, which is why it keeps selling out. And we also have the uh, the Aqualung i330R dive computer, which is sort of the color screen version of it. Um, it's a, a color screen dive computer with a, uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it, a, a small large screen if that makes sense. It's bigger than a wristwatch but it's smaller than a large screen dive computer um, but color screen so uh, so everything's color coded which is handy. Um, as far as social channel updates, videos this week, uh, on Friday's Ask Mark I was talking about side mount BCDs. Someone was um, uh, they're, they're planning to get into side mount diving um, and they're, they're wondering whether it is worth investing in a BCD straight off or uh, or waiting a little bit or sort of buying a, um, uh, a single back mounted cylinder and then uh, sort of progressing and it's it's very circumstantial side mounts is that like outlier of a um, of a discipline in scuba where you kind of have to have a side mount specific BCD to go side mount diving, um, but I wouldn't recommend anyone just just get any old side mount BCD. It's quite important to get one that works with you. So um, just if if you're in that um, that like Venn diagram of someone who is thinking about going into side mount and wants to buy a, um, a side mount BCD, have a chat with your instructor um, just because they'll know all of the, the pros and the cons of like the different models and why they went for this specific uh, sort of side mount harness system and, uh, and then you can make a, a more educated uh, sort of decision. But it is worth investing in your own because after you after you qualify and then you want to go side mount diving you you can't just use your your recreational jacket bcd it, it does have to be a, a side mount specific bcd then somebody was asking about layering up and whether if you wear a five mil wetsuit and uh, one of those like thermal base layers, the um, uh, fourth element thermocline or lava core or something, if you wore that underneath, would that equate to a seven mil wetsuit by itself? Um, which is kind of, it's going to be sort of um, relatable. It probably won't be exactly, but it, it's one of those things. It's it's going to be better than your 5 mil because you do have added insulation. Um, so if you have the option between a a 5 mil with one of these um, sort of insulated base layers underneath and you also have a 7 mil wetsuit, which one would you go for? There are pros and cons on both sides. Um, personally, I'd probably choose the 7 mil, um, but for no no particular reason, I just figure that one, like, complete uh, wetsuit that has been manufactured and designed is probably going to be the more effective than two component parts that have been developed separately. Um, the, the benefit of having that thermal base layer is that they tend to be neutrally buoyant so you don't have to add any extra lead but uh, yeah as far as warmth goes there's probably not going to be a great deal of um, of difference but there might be a little um someone was asking about dsmbs uh, i think that was about um if there are um pouches oh no correction uh it was whether there was like a hard fast rule on who in the group has to uh, send up a dsmb and whether you're in like an elongated group whether it's uh, sort of worth one person at the front sending a DSMB up and then one person at the back sends one up, which does make a lot of sense. Um, and it's it's all very circumstantial. Um, 
you just have to sort of read read the group read the dive site and uh, and just sort of work accordingly it's you, you don't want too many dsmbs in close proximity because then everything just gets tangled up and it's, it's a bit of a mess whereas if if you're in an elongated group and two people on both extremities sends up a, a dsmb then the entire group sort of in the middle should be relatively safe um and you have a, a low risk of or a lower risk of uh, sort of entanglements um towing tips as well for some countries or some dive sites in particular you have to have a permanent smb from the start of the dive um, and they were just asking about tips on like how to manage that if you're the person who has to hold on to that dsm uh, sorry that smb and yeah it just sucks the main one is just share it as much as possible um, because the rest of the group they they either don't know or they don't really think about it quite as much how much extra work and effort that you have to go into um just pulling this thing that's constantly it's like trying to tow an anchor um I mean, not exactly like that, but it does feel like that at times, especially if the wind is blowing in the wrong direction or there's a lot of uh, so like surface waves that you have to drag it against. Um, other tips were basically try not to let out too much slack line. Um, it kind of feels good for a moment because you don't have that constant tension on the line, but it just gets worse and worse. So try and manage that um, uh, any excess slack line. Keep it uh, relatively taut and uh, just share it. Swap it backwards and forwards every few minutes or so so that you don't get too tired uh, and your buddy is still nice and fresh. Um, Someone was asking about the uh, the quarter turn rule and uh, and when we stopped that there was a big movement. Um, I think it was early last year, where um, just all of a sudden I think it was a Dan article that uh, that sparked it all off, and and they um, they were reporting on the the quarter turn rule, which I used to teach. Um, that's how I was taught. That's just how I was taught and that's how I ended up teaching a lot of my students is that when you open up the cylinder valve you open it all the way up and then a quarter turn back um, nowadays with modern valves that's a bit redundant we don't need to do that it was old valve designs on cylinders that if you did open it all the way up there was a chance that it would stick in the open position so if you then had to close the valve in an emergency you couldn't so they just invented the uh, the quarter turn rule to prevent that valve from sticking modern valves don't have that same issue they they redesigned the internal parts so that it's not an issue but what the quarter turn did then uh, sort of create is this separate problem of people unsure whether their valve is open or closed and they go to an already open valve they they feel that it can move in both directions and they screw it the wrong way effectively closing the cylinder valve and then opening it a quarter turn now what that does is allow a little amount of gas through but not quite enough to breathe properly especially at depth so um, they had actually found that this had been a, a contributing factor to some incidents I can't remember if there were any fatalities but incidents definitely um, where yeah, you look at your gauges, it says that you've got plenty of gas, you've got a full tank of gas, um, but if you breathe from your second stage and actually look at that needle, when you inhale, the needle would drop and then return back to the actual correct reading. So if you're not doing your buddy checks or your pre-dive checks properly, you could miss that. You can still breathe from that regulator, but the deeper down you go, of course, you're requiring more and more gas volume to to inhale to fill up your lungs but that quarter turn valve wasn't open enough to deliver enough gas um, and at certain points of that uh, of that airflow because of the uh, the demands and the, uh, the the lack of supply the gas flow could actually reach the speed of sound and create a choke point that would like lock up the uh, the airflow so yeah nowadays all we do is just open up the valve all the way um, don't jam it open um, just finger tight uh, as with most valves and um, and and that's it and um, yeah I think it was like early last year where um, where all the like 
diving forums and Instagram posts and all that kind of stuff. There were all of these um, these posts about all oh, the quarter turn rule. Yeah, this is the new dangerous thing in scuba diving. Um, but yeah, we. We don't do that anymore. Uh, and also, someone was asking a question about wetsuit fitting. They uh, they tried on a wetsuit. They thought it was a bit too tight. Uh, but then after they went for a dive, actually by the end of the dive, it was fitting perfectly and really nice and warm. And and that kind of is it because you've got that water lubricating it. It it kind of it molds into position as opposed to when you first put it on. Certain sections of that neoprene are going to be a bit bunched up. Others are going to be stretched. So it can feel a little bit snug and tight but once you're in the water it does kind of loosen up and does fit so um yeah if you try a wetsuit on and it does feel a little snug it's a really hard scale to uh, to judge and explain to people on just how snug a, a wetsuit should feel as long as you're not feeling lightheaded um, or uncomfortable or restricted in any way um, then it should fit it's one of those things it's best to go to a dive center to um, to get like an instructor or a dive master to kind of like look at it and just go yeah you know what that that looks like it fits or no that looks a bit too small um, and on the flip side you don't want it too loose so if it's too loose it's really easy to get into it's really easy to move around in but really easy for the water to get in and flush around so then you're getting all that cold water continually flowing over you and you're just going to get cold so you don't want it too big you don't want it too small you just want it just right um on saturday's answered um i typed in i think it was apex scuba into google and i was answering questions about that uh, of course questions about um uh, Apex and Aqualung because uh, there's a relationship between those two um, and then of course it, I think it just led on to uh, sort of technical diving and whatnot. Uh, the dive brief is going to be the uh, the product video for the Mars Atlas regulators the new 62X this is their new flagship regulator uh, I think that was my product of the week last week uh, very nice regulator in you if you're in the market um, and on Tuesday I've got top tips on signals not actual hand signals but just like abstract tips like if you're wearing black gloves obviously don't show hand signals in front of your black wetsuit because your buddy's not going to be able to see it uh, use a torch so that you can highlight your hand uh, so your buddy can see it and uh, and all those kind of things Moving on to scuba news, the uh, the training agency Raid has just introduced a new course. Um, so this is their, um, uh, what were they calling it again? Scuba Reboot. Um, it's effectively a, um, a scuba review and and it's basically designed around if you, if you haven't been diving for a while, um, because a lot of us haven't been diving um, during the uh, the past few years, um, and it's it's a way to, to of course refresh all of your skills, but it's not limited to raid. Um, students. It's open to other training agencies. So the course includes a comprehensive revision of academic knowledge uh, and at least one confined water or pool session, which works on your basic skills just to uh, yeah, sort of brush up all of the, the fundamentals to make sure that you can remember everything and, oh yeah, I forgot about this, that and the other. Um, and there is a additional, uh, an optional, sorry, uh, open water dive with the, uh, with the instructor. And then after you uh, successfully complete all of that you receive a scuba reboot e-card uh, so a digital um like card that effectively says that yes you, you've done this because if it's been a while uh especially over like six months where you haven't been scuba diving and you then just rock up to a uh, to a dive resort a lot of the time they'll ask when your last dive was if it's over six months they'll usually require you to do a, a scuba review before you go out with them um, so you can do this at your own uh, sort of time just find your or your local raid dive center and uh, and go through this before your trip and it basically saves you a day um, of swimming around in a swim pool whilst you're on holiday but um but yeah this is a um a lot of the the raid community uh were kind of saying oh you know what all of the courses are great and um and the, they go on into all of this continuing education but actually there there isn't a um like a scuba review um course for us so um so yeah they they drew one up and now that that exists so um yeah if it has been a little bit of a while since you've been in the water and you're thinking about getting back into it uh yeah you don't have to be a um a raid instructor 
a raid scuba diver um you can come from um sort of other training agencies um and um and basically see how how raid teaches and um and how their courses sort of work because a lot of it is well i think all of it is uh, is digital when they uh, they started off they they were very passionate about not creating reams and reams of um, of paper manuals and all that kind of stuff is is mainly digital uh, i myself i've done a couple of raid courses and they're they're pretty intensive they um they do teach you a lot of quite advanced diving from the get-go so if you're just interested in uh, in you know, brushing up and learning a bit more about your diving uh, it's definitely worth sort of looking at raid and considering them at least and um and yeah then you get this little e-card that basically uh, sort of lets you dive um dive again without having to go through a um, a refresher course whilst you're out on holiday after 11 years of incredible service scotland's only underwater sniffer dog has retired uh, so this is springer spaniel barra who um they they basically took out on ribs and small boats over uh, sort of waterways to effectively sniff for um bodies underneath the water to uh, to get some closure for families and um and it was only the um the owner who who sort of read about um, dogs that could do this and um and they worked for the coast guard i believe and they figured hey you know what maybe this dog could um uh, could help out uh, contacted a um a trainer who um who who taught dogs how to do this and um and even whilst um barra this uh, this springer spaniel was in training actually found their first uh, body under the water and it's a a very quick way of searching a, a large area of water where you're not exactly sure where they are um it, it kind of narrows it down to a a, a limited area um so that then divers can do a, a smaller search pattern and uh, and find the remains and been very very successful over the years um but after 11 years of uh, of doing this the uh, the owner said that the um, their their back legs were starting to uh, to give out so they've um, so they've retired them they're still going to go out on boats from time to time uh, but not to uh, not to work just going to enjoy their uh, their retirement but um yeah this this sort of plays into um sort of almost one of my backgrounds which was in animal training and um yeah the first time i heard about this it's just incredible that a dog's nose can detect a, a body underwater um and um and yeah he the the owner would sort of respond to requests of just families they've lost loved ones they don't know exactly where they are so they always have that sort of thought in the back of their mind that their their loved one is still missing they don't know exactly where it is so they don't have that closure so they would get in contact and um and yeah they, they would take this dog out on a uh, on a rib and um and most of the time actually locate the uh, the missing person so um it is an incredible service and incredible skill by the um, uh, by the dogs and the owners. Um, so yeah, hopefully they'll get a um, a replacement soon to um, to help with for, uh, further missing persons. Researchers have managed to develop a um, an, an artificial teeny tiny little fish that's going to help or the proof of concept uh, at this stage is not ready for release it's just proof of concept but they've managed to develop this um, sort of fish that's only 13 millimeters long and it's made out of multiple layers of um, uh, something that's been modeled after nacre which is the interior lining of a mother of pearl shell um, layering just microscopic sheets of this together um, and then shaping it into this tiny little like fish shape like a leaf um they've what it basically does is you release this into the water and they they only move like at the same like rate of uh, of plankton um so it's about 30 millimeters a second they're, they're not just zigzagging around and um, finding microplastics but microplastics are actually attracted to this like nacre material um and they say it's a lot like static um, so that stuff will stick to it and then when once enough has uh, sort of collected onto it the researchers uh, can then sort of scoop it off of the surface and uh, and then sort of analyze it and whatnot and of course remove uh, safely remove these uh, these microplastics um, 
but yeah they say this might be um sort of a, another uh, sort of weapon in the uh, in the war against microplastics um would this be like the simpsons we're releasing elephants to uh, to try and catch all of the snakes um we don't really know but this concept uh, sort of has proven to uh, to work the proof of concept works um the main downside to it at the moment is that they only tend to stick around the surface but of course they're working on a way to try and uh, sort of develop a um a, a 2.0 version as it were um that's um, that can go deeper under the water and uh, and kind of scour the um the ocean to uh, to remove all of these ocean plastics and another thing that's amazing about this is that if they get damaged um through like rough seas or whatever they can actually heal themselves up to 89 percent um of their ability and then continue absorbing even in case uh, um uh, in the case it experienced some damage or cutting so it is just this sort of material that yeah if you kind of leave it long enough the the microplastics are drawn to it they stick to it and then you take it out of the water and um and it's like this kind of filter that helps to uh, to remove the um the microplastics now this is very early days um they're, they're obviously not sort of going into mass production or anything because they need to make sure it doesn't negatively affect anything else but uh, but yeah very very interesting um maybe it's something that we can coat other things um and uh, and use as a filter to try and filter out the microplastics but nothing else um but yeah it is fascinating that this um sort of mimic of a um a, a natural uh, material this nacra this mother of pearl shell layer um has that um, has that ability to attract microplastics um and then uh, sort of stick to them so that you can um, effectively filter these microplastics out of the water and finally to celebrate the international day of yoga uh, a group of scuba divers well actually quite a few scuba divers all over asia um did some underwater yoga so full scuba gear uh, minus the fins and um yeah you can see sort of pictures and videos of them doing their underwater yoga poses um just to um yeah do something a little bit different this isn't like unusual it's not something that they only do like once a year it's quite frequent to uh, to see underwater yoga but usually in swim pools um but this group of divers in particular that i'm reading the, uh, the news article about um they were in the uh, the coral lagoon waters of uh, of bangram island and um yeah they they say obviously yoga it helps with losing weight to tone muscles build stamina um, but there's always been a very close tie between yoga and scuba diving because a lot of it or a lot of yoga is to do with your breathing controlling being more aware of your breathing so that helps with your uh, your air consumption whilst you're scuba diving and as well as your, your flexibility so that you can reach all of your equipment and whatnot um but yeah if you're looking for for something to do on your next dive trip um maybe do some underwater yoga Moving on to my product of the week, which this week is the fourth element hydro skin and hydro tea rash vests. Um, so rash vests, they they originally started out to uh, to be worn underneath your um, uh, your wetsuit to help prevent rashes, which is why we call them rash vests. Um, but they um, they also have the added benefit of if you wear it by itself, it's it's effectively a, a, a protection from the sun as well as a lot of marine bites and stings and things um, because the material itself it's a much closer weave compared to just a, a normal day-to-day t-shirt um, so when it stretches um, you don't get the same amount of uh, I think they call it grinning which is where, where the threads separate and allow the sun rays to come through because it's a much tighter weave it prevents a lot of that light from transmitting through so it's a bit like wearing sunscreen but of course a lot of sunscreen is quite damaging to the reefs so this is a great alternative um, to uh, to protect yourself they're uh, they're both UPF 50 plus uh, so you can spend more time in the water without the uh, the sun damaging your skin but also even though it's a, a relatively thin material it's actually thick enough to prevent uh, a lot of jellyfish stings and uh, and all that kind of stuff so it's it's a way to protect yourself basically so if you're diving or just snorkeling in very sunny tropical climates if you're on holiday then a rash vest helps to protect you uh from both yeah harmful uv rays as well as uh, sort of marine bites and stings as well as like brushing up against stuff with your wet skin um 
but these ones, both the Hydro Skin and the Hydro T, the Hydro T is basically a loose fit version. So if you don't want a, um, a really tight body hugging um, uh, material, you've got the Hydro T, which fits more like a, a classic fit. So it's, it's loose fit. Um, but they're both part of Fourth Element's Ocean Positive range, which uses recycled materials, in this case recycled polyester. Uh, the Hydra Skin is 85% uh, recycled polyester. Uh, that's in combination with elastane. Um, that gives it that sort of bend and stretch. Um, so it's actively good for, um, uh, for our oceans. And, um, and the Hydro T is, um, is less, it's, uh, I think it's only about 27% recycled polyester because uh, that's a uh, uh, the recycled polyester normal um, polyester and elastane uh, just in a slightly different um, uh, like combination um, but yeah d depending long slot uh, long and short sleeve version options um, but yeah just just a way to either add an extra layer or just wear it by itself if you're diving somewhere nice and warm uh, you can sort of wear this it's better than a, a traditional t-shirt because when you're in the water, when you're moving around, a lot of the fibers do end up in the water, which we don't want with a traditional t-shirt. Uh, whereas rash vests, they, again, that tighter weave and the the actual material that they're using, it, it doesn't uh, sort of brush off into the water. So it's better for our environments. It's better for you as well, um, instead of just not wearing a shirt or anything because BCDs do tend to rub. Um, but yeah, as well as snorkeling, all sorts of other um, sort of surface water sports and things, um, yoga, stand up pedal board, all that good stuff um, to uh, to just protect your top half. And um, and yeah, if you're if you're worried about tan lines, there are short sleeve versions as well. Uh, long sleeve to protect your forearms. The long sleeve version has a thumb loop to really keep it in place. Um, and all of the um, the 2022 colorways and designs are like ocean inspired so lots of some navy blues and corals and whatnot um but yeah if you need a new rash vest uh then yeah head over to uh, to simply scuba.com and check out the uh, the fourth element hydro skin or if you want a loose fit rash vest the hydro t and next we move on to my question of the week which as usual comes from reddit uh, and this one was any tips that they don't teach you on the open water course so this was someone who's who's just starting out um they would like going on their open water course in an hour and they were just wondering if there was any um it's like any recommendations from the diving community on just yeah not not the standard things that you read in the book if there's any other tips and tricks uh, about when you're first starting out the main one is to just just relax and uh, and trust your instructor because where you will be diving the the area the time has been very carefully um, considered and assessed because as an instructor you're always thinking this making sure that you're going in the safest environment possible um, just trust your equipment um, and the diving crew so that <clears throat> when you're when you're nice and relaxed it's um, is going to make your diving a lot easier because if you a lot of people when they're a bit apprehensive they tend to hold a bit more air in their chest uh, when they're inhaling which then makes you a bit more buoyant so you end up having to require a bit more lead to uh, to get down and that means that you're going to have a, a greater shift in buoyancy when you change your depths so actually if you if you can sort of have a little less gas in your uh, in your lungs whilst you're diving if you can relax into it you don't need that much negative lead and then of course you don't need as much positive buoyancy in your bcd whilst you're diving so just just relax um obviously don't hold your breath um because that's a, a big no-no whilst while scuba diving but that is taught or hopefully taught in your um in your open water course and yeah just enjoy yourself um don't use your uh, your arms. Uh, your arms are quite useless in the water. Um, it, when you've been learning to swim, there's a lot of focus on what your arms are doing, uh, whether it's breaststroke or front crawl and all that kind of stuff. But actually, while scuba diving, it's your legs that do easily 99% of the work. Uh, your arms are relatively useless. They're great for communicating and sorting out equipment and whatnot. But whilst you're actually in the water, a lot of the time, a lot of divers just 
tuck their arms and fold their arms out of the way because they're kind of useless um, and try not to fiddle with your equipment too much on the dive um, it can feel that you're something it's normally the um, the beastie inflator um, that divers tend to play about with a little bit too much especially on um, on entry level dives because they feel that they're floating away or something but actually it's because they're just holding a bit of gas inside of their lungs or they're sinking down a bit too much because they've exhaled and there's a bit of a delay between when you inhale and then you start to ascend and when you exhale then you start to descend until you get used to that like two count um, delay you 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 almost think oh it's it's because i need to adjust my buoyancy and my bcd you don't um in a lot of cases obviously if you do continue uh, you do need to get that neutral buoyancy and it does come with time um it's not something that that most divers pick up on dive one or even dive two or even three four and five it's it's something that most divers uh, sort of pick up on once they're sort of almost getting into their uh, their double digits to get that perfect buoyancy but it will come um it it takes a little bit of a time to uh, to sort of just get used to that sensation and you, your body will tell you the uh, the most like sort of effective ways and you, you'll get into the swing of things and getting used to how your buoyancy works in the water and also kind of listen and feel for the water because the water will teach you the most efficient ways of moving and how to be streamlined and once you sort of learn to read like little signals that you can see and feel in the water you're going to be a bit more efficient and a bit more um uh, sort of proactive instead of reactive um, because if there's a, a mild current you'll often see the particles in the water uh, kind of drifting in a certain direction you can feel it as well so then you know to sort of swim out a little bit if there's a rock outcropping, uh, outcropping uh, you can see the fish um, if they're sort of really close to the reef and um, and they're all swimming in the same direction then there's probably going to be a fair amount of current right there whereas if they're out they're just mingling around in the uh, in the open water then chances are there's not too much current there so you don't have to worry too much about it um, so there are all these little things but it mainly comes down to just just relax just pay attention to your instructor because uh, they're going to tell you everything that you need to know um, but also don't ever be afraid to point something out or ask a question about anything if there's something that seems a little bit odd with your um, with your equipment or something that you're unsure on um, don't ever hide it because it could get worse just just sort of say oh uh, I've got this is this normal um, and then your instructor or your dive master will sort of say oh, okay yeah no that's normal it does this because of such and such um, but if it is an issue um, if you've uh, if you've got like an empty cylinder or something um, then they'll go oh okay yeah no this means it's an empty cylinder um, now we need to uh, sort of fix it here's how we fix it or um, or this is why it's doing a certain thing let's fix it before we get in the water um, yeah don't don't ever be afraid to um, to ask a question about anything um, <clears throat> in or out of the water um, but yeah the, the main thing is just to just to relax and enjoy yourself really um, your instructor has um, has really sort of considered everything but if you do see something a little bit weird uh, yeah just just ask the question and that's it for this week um, remember to uh, to like share subscribe do all that good social media stuff uh, links to all of the products and the videos and things that I've spoken about the news stories as well they're going to be down in the description below uh, of course head over to our website simply scuba.com for all of your scuba diving equipment needs and if you've got any questions comments queries corrections uh, to anything that you've heard today or anything that you just want to hear me elaborate on uh, if you type out your comment and then use the hashtag ask mark uh, either Either at the beginning or the end it doesn't really matter uh, i will discuss it on the ask mark weekly q and a thank you for listening everybody and of course safe diving <laughs>